Hello people, this is the fourth tutorial that I'm preparing for the people who want to, who want to uh, transition from the Abacus CAE to 3D Experiences platform. And uh, the first three uh, videos uh, dealt with uh, this particular problem, in other words, using explicit dynamics uh, uh, in 3D Experience, which means Abacus's explicit uh, 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 version. Uh, to crush an aluminum aluminum tube uh, with a block. Okay. In the first video, I actually uh, modeled the block as a uh, with, with solid elements, and uh, I gave it the material um, material properties for steel, and ran it. In the second video, I came and instead of that solid block, I turned it into a plate but I still meshed it with uh, shell elements and uh, gave it properties of uh, uh, steel, except that I had to go and adjust the, dens uh, the, the, the density because when you take a, a thin plate, obviously the mass of it is not gonna be the same as the mass of this block. It may be made of the same material. So first of all, I had to adjust the density uh, make it bigger so that with the thickness that I had, I actually had the same total mass. And then I had to make it very stiff because uh, if it's not stiff enough, or, or basically it's going to bend. So uh, that it cannot be compared to the first uh, uh, situation, namely steel block hitting a, a, an aluminum tube. Uh, all right, there I had to mesh the mesh the uh, the the plate, the steel plate and but I had to increase the stiffness artificially. In the third video tutorial, I used an analytical rigid surface, so I didn't actually create the, uh, a, the, uh, the impactor. I just uh, made it a surface, an uh, analytical rigid surface, and then uh, gave it the appropriate uh, uh, mass, the mass being the mass of this block, calculated according to just formula for uh, uh, volume times density of the steel and assigned it to the reference point with that rigid, uh, with that uh, analytical rigid surface. What I want to do now, this video four, is I will actually uh, make the block but declare it as a rigid body. Okay. Now, uh, when you declare it as a rigid body, I don't have to go and artificially change the stiffness and things like that. Now, uh, the, the mass, you have to be a little bit careful. We'll come to that later on. Uh, here's the situation. So we are, we are, we are modeling uh, this, this, uh, this uh, block as a rigid body, okay? Uh, and uh, here is, here is how it looks when it deforms. Notice that, uh, that being the case, by the way, you cannot, because you declare a rigid body, you cannot plot the stresses, for example, in the, uh, in the block itself. But that's not of interest to us. Okay, so uh, now notice that uh, you, uh, this block that I'm gonna have to mesh it with solid elements, I'm going to give it dummy material properties uh, because it really doesn't matter. The only thing you have to worry about is the issue of the mass or the density of uh, of, of that uh, uh, of that uh, dummy dummy property. Now uh, I'll talk about this thing later on. But uh, the other thing is that if you're going to model this thing with uh, solid uh, solid elements, obviously you have to give it a, a solid section. Uh, and there, there you need the material, but it's going to be a dumb material. Okay, so here's the problem that actually coming from this uh, source, and uh, this is the way uh, it was described in tutorial one. These four edges, these four edges of the aluminum tube are clamped, and this block is coming with a velocity of 25,000 millimeters per second, and it's going to impact that. And uh, what I will do is I will in a minute, I'll show you in a few minutes how to make this thing uh, a rigid body, okay? Now, uh, but the thing is that since we are not interested in the stresses, you can't get the stresses anyway in this block if you're declaring as a rigid body, uh, then it can be a very coarse, and the, the, actual, the actual type of it is not important either. But of course, what you need to do is put the proper material 
proper prop not material proper mass of this block uh, for example as a reference uh, at the reference point now uh, this is going to be done with shell elements and uh, here's the reference point uh, which i'm going to assign the mass of the block to it let me talk about this thing a little bit more later on there's two ways to handle this one is to this dummy material which is needed for that uh, rigid uh, rigid block uh, you can you can you can give it uh, the, the proper density you have to give it proper density if you if you if, if if that's one way of doing it give it the proper density so it gives you the the true mass of this block but then don't put a big mass at this reference point there's two ways to do it give it the proper density put a very small mass at the reference point uh, you can't make it zero because it's going to complain or you can give this thing a very small density so that its mass does not basically come into the picture but put the total mass at this reference point being the true total mass of this block there is two ways that this can be done and i think i'm going to i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to show you the first method in other words give it a dummy very small density to this and put the total mass of this the true total mass of this at the reference point okay so uh, in the geometry that, that we had there was a two millimeter gap here and uh, uh, these are the dimensions given by that uh, source that i showed you or uh, tutorial one a uh, thickness of this uh, shell is one and a half millimeter and uh, the size of this this block has to be meshed uh, in spite of the fact that we're going to be declaring as rigid body it has to be meshed and uh, 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 and uh, but the, the the nature of the mesh is not that that important and otherwise i can make a very coarse mesh here and we get the information that we want now the reference point uh, this reference point is traveling at 25000 millimeters per second as i said the location of the reference of reference point is not is not important either please please take a look at video 3 uh, that's where i introduce the reference point for analytical rigid surface and but you have to make sure that uh, the for example this block notice that this block or that reference point is traveling only in this direction make sure that you restrain all the other degrees of freedom because otherwise i notice that if you don't do that this thing will crush this thing and then kind of uh, uh, bounce bounce back and go side with the server so make sure the proper degrees of freedom restraint so that this actually come in hit it and then of course it'll bounce back now uh, what i'm going to do the mass of this uh, problem if this is if in the tutorial one we made this thing out of steel and the 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 the, the mass of that steel block based on the dimensions that i've given you and the properties of the steel that uh, were given then uh, is 0.0135 tons another 135 uh, actually 13 and a half kilograms okay uh, so if i'm going to put the true mass at the reference point i better give to that dummy material that i need in order to mesh this thing and put properties on it a very small density one kilogram per meter cube remember steel's density is about seven eight thousand kilogram per meter cube so i'm going to declare the density of that dummy material to be one kilogram per meter cube because i don't want it to interfere with uh, uh, the, the the mass of uh, you know the reference point because it will take this mass and add it to that reference point mass now the data for aluminum was given uh, as in as in uh, or is given as in tutorial one video one so it's a plus this this is uh, uh, the elasticity the, uh, the uh, Young's modulus Poisson ratio is given here, and uh, this is the yield strength 250 megapascal. And at the strain of uh, 0.1 plastic strain of 0.1, uh, the stress is uh, 300 uh, megapascal. Okay, uh, I'm going to use general contact in order to do this problem, and uh, friction coefficient 0.3, everything else is def default, and the total duration is uh, uh, tw 20 millisecond or 0.02 seconds. For the mesh, I'm, I, I will use the shell elements here. Uh, size of the shell element being five millimeter, and I will use the reduced integration. Okay, S4R, 
and for uh, the the block as i said this this is totally uh, insensitive toward the nature of the mesh and the type of the mesh so i'm going to use linear tetrahedral with a size 50 millimeter which is going to be pretty uh, that's why these are too very big okay now exactly what i did for the block is also going to work for the shell in other words i can create a rigid rigid plate here but i have to mesh it dummy mesh okay and same comments that i made about uh, about putting the right mass here etc etc works for this too okay so but i'm not going to show you the one on the right hand side this video tutorial is about the one on the left so let's go ahead and do this problem uh we are in the uh, 3d uh, interface the 3D experience interface. So let me put my first uh, first uh, object, uh, first, uh, let's call it part, right click, insert, uh, 3D part, and that I'm gonna call uh, the tube. How about, how about the tube? Let me do that. Okay, right click properties. This is going to be my tube. I'll call it tube. Just so that I can find it in case I need it. September 28. 2020, 28. September 28. Yep, yeah, that, that's fine. Copy. Under instance, same thing. All right. And let's make it. So I go there, double click on this, on that vertical plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter uh, square. We dimension these things. 100 millimeter here. The dimension there also 100 millimeter okay and exit and i'm going to extrude that because i want to create a surface uh, this is in part design so i have to switch to generative shape design if you want to generate a surface okay good so i go extrude this and i will go from uh, minus two millimeters to 302 millimeters and in the other direction so that length is now uh, 300 millimeter and is two millimeters away from the x uh, from the what is that x uh, z plane okay good that takes care of this why don't i apply material to that although i've done this thing several times i'll do it again for people who are seeing this thing for the first time so we go to tools uh let me create a material I'll call it aluminum. Aluminum. Uh, September 28. Let me say OK. <clears throat> All right. Uh, because uh, these things take time so uh, although i did create it but because this is uh, uh, on the cloud it may take time for it to pop up on my screen let me see for a second so let me uh, do it again uh, what is that uh, some uh, thumbnail view how about uh, let's do it sorted by uh, uh newest to the oldest there it is right here okay so right click apply i'm going to close that and i'm going to apply it to this material uh, this part and now we can input the, the data so we go here double click on it okay structural uh general density the density for uh, in the unit of uh, 
tons per uh, millimeter cube for aluminum it was 2.5 e to the minus 9 okay good and then we go to abacus uh, multi-physics mechanical elasticity elastic for uh, 70 70 thousand uh, megapascal that's the young's modulus for the aluminum Poisson ratio 0.3 okay and then we go to plasticity metal plasticity plastic uh, so 250 megapascal uh, for uh, uh, strain of plastic strain of zero which means yield strength and this is 300 uh, plastic stain of 0 0.1 that's pretty much it this is the same thing that i've used in the previous four uh, previous three videos so i could have used it but uh, just leave it the way it is now I'll go all the way to the top, all the, all the way to the top, and then I'm going to insert, right? I'm going to insert another 3D shape. That's going to be the uh, the rigid, uh, let me call this, this is the block. I'll call it the rigid block, but that's just the name, okay? So insert, insert, 3D part, right there. And I'm going to do right-click properties, and I'll call this thing rigid it's just a name rigid block rigid block let me copy this thing put it under the reference name here paste say okay there we are and now we're going to make it double click okay so uh on the vertical plane same vertical plane as before i'm going to sketch a uh, square which is 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter so let's see now this is 120 and 120 good exit now i want to pad this thing in the opposite direction by 120 millimeter notice that uh, uh in incidentally because i'm declaring this thing as rigid and because i'm not using i'm not using the uh the, the the size of this box for calculating of the mass because i'm putting the actual mass on the reference point which i've not created by the way uh it, it, this this does not have to be 120 millimeter it can be anything that you want it makes no difference but it has to be meshed with solid elements that's that's my point uh okay so let me go to uh, part design because this is going to be a three-dimensional part i'm going to pad it so pad essential pad this in the other direction please note that doesn't have to be 120 because the material that I put on it is going to be a dummy one. It really doesn't matter. Right there. Now let's create our material, the dummy material. So we're going to go to uh, 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 tools, add, call it dummy, dummy material. We need the material because we're going to have to create solid. We want to mesh this thing. We need solid. Uh, section okay we need that uh dummy material september 28 okay must be somewhere here uh let's see dummy material september 28 right click apply i'm gonna close that apply it to this and now i'm gonna put in my dummy stuff dummy uh properties in it okay so we go here uh structures we need a density but this density must be small enough so that it doesn't interfere with uh, uh doesn't interfere with the the, uh, the, the, the uh, with the mass okay okay i can put down one kilogram per meter cube so pretty much nothing i can actually type this thing one kilogram kilogram underscore 
I think it was meter cube, right? M3. Yeah, which converted in into this. Yes. It's uh, 10 to the minus 12, uh, right? And uh, it's going to be elastic, uh, so we're going to go. Uh, we have to put some dummy, dummy properties, elastic properties on it. So I put down, oh, I don't know, one MPA, and uh, it doesn't matter, 0.3, whatever you want. It makes no difference. I'll put down 0.1 because I'm going to show you these are totally irrelevant. Okay, and stays elastic. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it stays. It's it's going to be rigid. Okay, so we say okay. Now, uh, what we need to do is while I'm here, I'm going to create a point. Now, notice that this point is going to be called a reference point, and basically the motion of this block is going to be is going to be dictated by the motion of that reference point. You can use one of these corner points if you want, or if you don't use it, you can put it at the center of the mass of this by default. Okay, uh, but I'm going to create a point. I rather create a point. So let me go back to this uh, part. I'm going to create a point, point, and location of it is not important. So I go 150 to the right and create it there. So this is going to be my reference point right there. It doesn't matter where it is, where, where it is. Okay, good. Uh, there is there is the point. Okay, okay. So uh, let's save everything. All right, let's go to the meshing stuff. So first we're gonna to go to create for meshing or go structural model creation, we go there. It's a, a MTFEM. Okay, now, uh, where is that thing? Right here. The only thing, the only miss, uh, the only thing is that I want it to be Created at the top level and it is at the top level. Now, uh, let me double click on this thing. Double click on. Okay, no, no, no problem. So, uh, uh, let me see now. Uh, let's go ahead. Where is my. Uh, stuff these are in hiding right click hide and show right click hide and show all right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to mesh this thing first of all so uh, this is a quad mesh now notice that it is not letting me pick this okay uh, that's because oops, that's because uh, cancel that okay that's because notice that when I try to mesh this, I can't even pick it. That's there's a reason for that. We cancel that. Let me go to setup here. Let me go to setup. Double click on this contributing shapes and manager. Double click because it says okay. I've got two 3D uh, 3D shapes here or 3D uh, uh, 3D products here. A uh, product of two. <laughs> I have two products here in this assembly. Uh, which ones do you want to actually participate in the uh, calculation? So I say all of them, and we say okay, okay. Do I do that? Now can I mesh it? Yes, you see that? Now it allows me to mesh it. Let me cancel that for a second. Go back here to show you what happened. You go back to setup, you click on this, it says that count these, and that, that's why now I can mesh it. So I go to mesh. Let's mesh this guy first, first of all. Uh, so uh, this is a surface quad mesh there. Size is five millimeters. Mesh it. There we are. You see that? Okay. Now, uh, I can mesh this thing 
uh, well, first of all, let's see now. It, did it, uh, I have to create the, the properties for it to also. It has the mesh right there. You can see that. But it also needs the property. You go on the on the properties. Here is the uh, here is the shell shell section. Select that uh, uh, aluminum tube. The whole thing. Proper material is selected. You see that aluminum, and 1.5 millimeters. Okay, good. Now, for uh, I can mesh this thing also. Let's do that right now. So I go to mesh. Uh, this is a tetrahedral mesh. I select that. Linear, 50 millimeter. Remember I said that? 50 millimeters linear. And mesh it. We need properties for it. So we go to property. Here's a solid property, solid. You select the support. Support is that block basically. Let me see if I can select that. Uh, dummy material, right? We say okay. So we have uh, the shell mesh and the properties section. Solid, uh, solid uh, uh, mesh and the property. Now, I need to go to abstraction. There is the abstraction tab, and notice that here. There's something called rigid body. Don't get the don't get the the impression that you know I can't do this thing for uh, you know surfaces because I told you towards the end that uh, it also applies to surfaces. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do that. Click on it. I select this uh, uh, select this part right there, and the reference point. See that reference point? I'm going to select this. And uh, that's it. Okay. So there we are. Oops. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Let me check that. Yep. That's good. Okay. All right. Good. So we have an abstraction here, right, right there. And uh, now I'm going to apply a mass, point mass to this. Okay, because remember the mass of this block is totally, totally nonsense. It's a very small number. So that mass, I'm gonna have to place it at that location, and the value of it is 0 0.0135 uh, tons. Okay. Now that comes from the fact that in tutorial one, we know the size of this. This was made out of steel. I calculated the total mass. And now placed it at that location uh, as the mass. Okay, so I go up here. Good. So where are we now? Uh, that's pretty much it, unless I forgot something. I don't think I have to uh, save everything. All right, good. So now we're going to go to not to structural scenario creation because this does not have the explicit uh, module in it, but mechanical scenario creation, mechanical scenario creation. We're going to do a structural one, and it says, where is your finite element model? So use the pull down menu, select whatever we did, and then we say, okay. Time. There we are. So uh, on the procedures, on the procedures, we are doing a uh, explicit dynamic duration of 0 0.02 seconds. 0 0.02 seconds. Already, I know that uh, geometric nonlinearity box is checked here, guaranteed right there by default. We say okay. All right. So let's see now. Why don't we actually uh, uh, clamp these four edges? So we go to boundary condition on the clamp. I select these one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then I told you that I better put some, uh, uh, you know, 
restrictions on how this is going to move so i go again to boundary condition change that to enforce uh, displacement fixed displacement basically you select that point that's the reference point it says you can only move in the direction x everything else including rotations are zero okay good and now we're going to go to uh, initial condition so we go to uh, initial conditions initial velocity that point my reference point can only move uh, or is given a velocity in the x direction and the magnitude of it is 25 uh, meter per second or 25,000 uh, millimeter per second second so we say okay right there all right now the interaction in other words the, the contact issue so i go to interactions let's define the friction coefficient first you go to contact property i'll call this thing my uh, my friction model my friction my friction or what value uh, coefficients this is just a name okay you only leave it contact property you want that's fine and you click on friction you click on this box you put down point point uh, point three in there and then we say okay and then we're going to do general contact it is possible to do other things. general contact minimizes in some cases the amount of work that you have to do so the general contact is right there it's on the interaction tab okay and make sure you select your proper uh, friction value otherwise you'll use zero default is zero right and uh, that's pretty much it okay okay let's save everything hopefully we didn't forget we go to uh, uh where is that simulate uh, let's do a model and scenario check hopefully we didn't forget anything all right uh, let's do the simulation checks There are some warnings here. I'm not very concerned about them, but you can always check. It's a good idea to read these things. Yeah. This is done, and now we're gonna run it. Hopefully there won't be any issues, and this is gonna crush that, and uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be all, all happy. Now remember it's very easy to generate color and good looking things however how accurate these things are you have to do a lot of work because uh, uh, it's easy to generate uh, as i said numbers and colors and the thing is that these explicit code generally speaking they don't fail okay so whatever you give it it'll give you something back unless the the, the issue is uh, something some property is missing etc but uh, there's no guarantee that actually there's conversions here, etc. So you really have to dig into it further. You have to plot the energy uh, uh, energy variables and make sure that uh, there's no artificial energy there or it's small compared compared to the kinetic and uh, you know uh, strain energy, etc. So these are things that really you should look into some uh, uh, proper sources re resources such as uh, uh, you know um, intermediate advanced work on uh, uh, finite elements okay uh, let's do the check the iterations it's going through here is the wall clock i think this takes about three minutes probably something like that right now it's one minute and we are uh, almost a quarter of the way through
Uh, the thing is that when you're doing implicit calculations, uh, it, it, it finds the, at every time step that it takes, it uh, does an iteration to make sure that the solution converges. In other words, uh, equilibrium is achieved, but that is not the case in, uh, in uh, explicit, uh, explicit dynamics. And this is why uh, uh, for very complicated problem, uh, this is a better approach, but you have to take the precautions that uh, you're, not, you're not just relying on the, the colors uh, and uh, the, the actual shape of deformation. There's, there's more to that. This same thing could have been done with a, a flat surface on the side, mesh it with some uh, shell elements. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change the, the type of the, the element to reduce integration. I'll show you how to do that, but I forgot to do it. So uh, therefore uh, it's too late. <laughs> I don't want to run it again, but I will show you as I have done in the previous three videos, I'll show you where that can be changed, okay? You go into the tree and that's where the uh, global element assignments are done. And you click on it and change it from S4R. Right now, the default is S4R, which is four noded a quad sh uh, sh uh, shell element. You change it to S4, S4R. So reduce integration. We're almost there. It's about four, about three minutes past. Uh, we are almost three quarters of the way. Of course, you can always uh, stop this. And when you stop it up to that point, you can look at the results. But uh, I don't want to stop it. I want to make, make sure this goes to the end. Yeah, 74%. Just remember, this has to go to 0.02. Uh, seconds while this is running so let's uh, see whether I talked about everything that I wanted uh, yes so uh, uh, shell element yeah I wanted to use see that uh, s4r reduce integration almost done 84%. Uh, this is the time increment, stable time increment, and uh, uh, that's why it takes so many iterations, so many steps. Like right now at this stage, we have 40,000 steps each of this value, as far as the step size, step, time step is concerned. Okay, almost done. 94%. No finite element analysis should be accepted without doing mesh conversion study. That's, you already know that, okay? And you're just ignoring it. Okay, good, this is done. Notice that when we plot the von Mises stress, it doesn't show us anything in the block because this block is assumed to be rigid. So you go down and down, and it's here. This is where it bounces back, actually. So let me stop this. Animate it. Animate it. I want to slow it down, so go to this clock. I change this thing to speed. You select the speed. Slow it down a little bit. Okay. Let me close that. Play it. I think that's too much, too much, it slows it down too much. See that? There we are. And if you look at the view from the side, from the right, you can see that after it crushes it at some point, it loses its energy and it stops and bounces back actually, right? Good. Now, 
Uh, if you want to see uh, this thing cut, let me remind you how this is done. So uh, I'm going to exit that. Okay. So you click on this and go to the uh, plot section. And notice that you can change the different views. Okay. Or you can rotate it yourself and select the one that you want. You can push it further. Okay. If you want to see your mesh here also, so you again you click on it, go to uh, edit, uh, plot options. So actually you can go here to go there. No, nope. go to plot options. <laughs> uh, you go to plot options over here. Uh, last one, it says show me. Uh, you can change this thing to mesh. I can't do it right now. Let's find out why. So let's do the following. Let me uh, let me go here. Show say show me everything. Uh, show me everything. Okay. Now here, let's go to the plot option. Uh, outline. Show me the mesh. Why? And now you can do a cut. And of course, you can animate it also. Uh, don't worry about this. There's two. Now, I told you that uh, you can change the element type. So you go here. You see this under uh, structure analysis case, element by assignment, element type by assignment. Double click on it. Notice that this is S4, right? You want to do S4R. This other one doesn't matter because uh, it's not really participating in the calculation. Okay. And then you have to run it again, uh, etc. So, uh, for example, you should you should run it with S4R, S4, compare the result, do mesh conversion study, etc. That takes care of this uh, video tutorial. So uh, uh, we'll now move on to other problems. Okay. So basically, uh, we have beat this thing to death uh, four different ways. Uh, of doing it, and uh, I'm pretty sure you get the picture. Thank you.